Obsidian has been arguably the most popular note app in the past year, which is no surprise because it is free and offers endless customization so you can build any note-taking system inside it. But now some people are considering to switch from Obsidian to this app called Capacities. Why is that? Well, let's see what it can do and which one is the best for you. So I've actually known Capacities since last year, but I haven't had a chance to play with it until recently. But it seems it's gotten a lot of improvements since then. My first impression is that it's like a cross between Notion and uh, note apps like Obsidian and Logseek, which is exactly the same thing I said about AnyType. AnyType is another new note app that I've reviewed recently. There are some big differences, like AnyType is local fast, whereas Capacities is cloud fast. But I have to say, they are very similar in many aspects. So if you're interested in capacities, you also want to check out any type to see which one you prefer. Anyway, this is a really pretty app. I don't think there are themes or any option to change the appearance like in Obsidian at the moment, except for light and dark mode, but it looks amazing as it is. You have the main panel at the center where you write and the pinned notes and files as well as the list of collections on the left. Then you have a calendar on the right. So like in many note apps nowadays, you get a daily note every day. This is where you write down anything you need to remember or do on each day. It could be uh, someone you met, things you talked about with your friends, books you read or idea you had. And as you write these things, you can link things together like you see on Wikipedia. But this is where it differs from Obsidian. When you link something, you can choose what it is, such as a person, a place, a book, or a web page. So uh, let's do a few examples. Say you just came across a really interesting article on a website. You can choose web link, run the menu, and paste the link. Then this is automatically added to the list of web links, which is where you can see all the links you've added so far. Now, say you made a new friend and you want to remember what you talked about with him. Here you choose a person from the list, which will add him to the list of people you know. Inside a page, you can add more information about him, like his profile photo, his number, email, or anything you like. Also, there's a graph view everybody loves. It visualizes the connections between notes, people, and everything you have in your database. Um, anyway, a really cool thing about this app is that you can choose the layout of each page. So if you want it to look like an actual profile page, choose profile. And also you can choose other styles like an index card and an encyclopedia. I love how you can customize the look of your page with just a few clicks like this. Now you can see the list of people you know. Like Notion, you can change the view type like gallery and the table depending on how you want to see the information and use the properties to filter or sort. So just like this, you can use capacities to organize different types of information with ease. Uh, by default, you have things like pages, images, and the files, but you can add more types by hitting new type, where you have more options like PDFs, books, and projects. But you could create your own type if you don't see the one you need. And then eventually, you have more and more types you can use. Speaking of organization, you can now use AI to organize your email inbox. Today's sponsor, Sainbox, is a must-have productivity tool for anyone who gets a lot of emails or have hundreds of unread and old emails in inbox. It will scan your email inbox and automatically identify the emails that are important to you and emails that are not. All the unimportant emails will be moved to the folder called Sain Later, so your inbox will be clean and you can focus on the emails that matter. This means you don't have to spend hours every week organizing your inbox because Sainbox does that for you. But that's not all. Samebox comes with a ton of time-saving features like Daily Digest and the same black hole. Daily Digest gives you a summary of unimportant unread emails so you can batch process them. Being able to archive many emails at once feels great and saves you a lot of time. And if you don't want to receive any more emails from a certain sender, you can add their emails to the same black hole. Then any future emails from them will be stored in there and won't be delivered to your inbox. You can use Samebox with any email client, whether you use Gmail, Outlook, or Yahoo. Just install the app and it will work seamlessly. You can try Samebox for free to see how it works for you. You don't even have to register your credit card. You can try from the QR code on the screen or from samebox.com slash Xiaomi and also get $25 credit. That's S-A-N-E-B-O-X dot com slash Xiaomi. A bonus tip before we go, you should try their deep clean feature. It will find all the emails that are taking up space in your inbox and clean them up for you so you can start fresh. All right, back to capacities. I think that's the gist of how you use this app to organize information. First, you write things or upload files in your daily note, then link and add them to the different types of objects. I like how simple this basic workflow is. Once you have set up objects you need, it's really easy to use afterwards. Um, by the way, the formatting options are good too. You can turn text into a code block, 
formula or highlight it with different colors. And if you click on a page while holding shift, it will open the page in the sidebar so you can see it while writing on the main panel. Also, just like in Notion, when you click on this six dots icon, it shows you the list of things you can do with the block, like turning it into a heading, quote, and a list. You can also group several blocks together, which I think looks really nice. Another awesome thing you can do is that you have this AI button, which gives this block as context to ChatGPT and ask anything about it. So for example, you can write a draft of a blog post and have it to revise it for you, but you can access AI chat just by pressing Command or Control J on your keyboard. So you can talk about anything you like. Being able to have multiple conversations open at the same time is amazing too. But this AI feature is only available on their paid plan, which is fair. It only costs like $10 a month, so it's not that expensive at all. Uh, plus, you will get other extra features such as block referencing and uh, early access to their mobile app. So I can see why some people might choose to switch to this app from other note apps. It has tons of great features and it is not that expensive. But I think many people, especially Obsidian users, find it attractive because it's much more simple and easy to set up. Endless customization is a strength of Obsidian, but also a weakness in some ways because it can make things complicated and uh, overwhelming. And you could spend hours and hours customizing things, which is fun, but not accomplishing anything. So if you're someone who's tired of customizing things and uh, want something simpler, I think you'll be happy with this app. There are still things that need to be worked on, like its mobile app isn't available officially, and capturing information from the app isn't so easy because it doesn't have a browser extension. But I'm sure they're working on it and they will add more features in the future. Personally though, I prefer an app that's even simpler than this one, like ones that you don't need to set up at all and do maintenance because that way I will have more time doing the work that actually matters. But if you like to tinker around and experiment with different things, these apps are great. You should check out my AnyType review because you might like it too if you're interested in capacities. All right, um, thank you so much for watching till the end and uh, I really appreciate it. See you in the next one. Bye.